everyone feels like Manacha. Since making cryptocurrency videos here on the channel on how to get started with development, probably the number one comment that I see on those videos is, does this work with blank chain? Blank typically being Binance Smart Chain. And it's not a topic I've typically addressed here on the channel is, I've primarily focused on Ethereum, but there are several other blockchains and cryptocurrency projects that exist in the ecosystem with their own pros and cons. And I wanted to just kind of talk through my thought process when it comes to picking a chain. I don't think there's a real clear cut winner and things constantly evolve, but let me know down in the comments below if there's a project or chain that you're specifically interested in and that that reason. I, I, I'd just be curious to hear that, but in this video today, I just wanna walk through just my thoughts on, on that. So if you do find this video helpful, definitely make sure to hit that like button because it helps out the channel a ton. And if you're interested in discussing more, you can also check us out over on Discord. As I mentioned, I've been primarily focused on Ethereum as the main blockchain that I build most of my tutorials on. And it's really for good reason as the most popular blockchain cryptocurrency project that supports smart contracts. And if you ask me personally, I think it's poised to eventually overtake Bitcoin in terms of market cap. It naturally makes sense to, to focus on as it has the most number of users, it has the most amount of tooling, it has the most amount of support when it comes to web wallets. And I think fundamentally, if you're looking at any chain, those are kind of the three, three things that you wanna take a look at. Is it easy to work with? Are there the right tools there that you're not having to reinvent the wheel? Are there enough resources when it comes to being able to bootstrap yourself and get a project out really quickly, especially when it comes to kind of very common projects such as these ERC starting standards, the ERC 1155 standard for NFTs, that it's very kind of plug and play in regards to actually creating this. And are there users, right? Are, are there people actually say building out wallets and ways that can interact with the blockchain that are friendly for people who might not know that much about cryptocurrencies other than what is the latest fad when it comes to NFTs. And you really need all three of those to one, make your life easy as a developer, two, also make sure that your project succeeds. And the real downside, at least when it comes to projects like Ethereum, fundamentally come down to, okay, because there are a lot of users, you start to see these increased costs when it comes to leveraging the blockchain. And it potentially, in the case of currently Ethereum 1.0, it's not environmentally friendly, but some of those things are starting to change with Ethereum 2.0, which I think is worth taking a look at. The real question is, as Ethereum continues to scale and evolve, will other projects be able to keep up? Will users jump to those other projects? And more importantly, I think, is the the code that I write today, let's say you're targeting Ethereum or it's kind of equivalent, is that project going to be deprecated by an eventual project that might come down in the future? And so as we look at the ecosystem today, right, you have several different alternatives. As I mentioned at the beginning, Binance Smart Chain is probably the quote unquote biggest competitor to Ethereum, but to be frank, it's still very far from actually being a competitor. And the, the key reason for this is purely due to the way that they handle validations on the blockchain. Compared to Ethereum, which is very decentralized in that it is actually a true blockchain project where anyone can mine and eventually stake on the Ethereum network and contribute to the security of the system by validating transactions. Binance is capped at 21 validators that are allowed to process nodes on the blockchain. This has the advantage that you have low fees and it's, it tends to be secure to some degree, but it has the flaw that because it's 21 validators and it's the top validators, it's very locked in in terms of centralization, right? So if you have a government that comes in, say like the US government, Russia, China, whatever it is, or even something like a Coinbase or a, a just Binance itself, they become a validator and you start to have 
people with very aligned incentives that could potentially corrupt the security of that blockchain. The more validators you have, say like in the case of Ethereum, the less likely that is to happen and the more secure the whole ecosystem can become. The reason, of course, Binance does it is to reduce fees, but that, again, like I said, comes at a cost of centralization. If you look at some of the other projects that are out there, some of the key advantages they have are primarily around proof of stake, being having proof of stake today, like Cardano, like Solana, like Avalanche. They're all proof of stake today. You can get things deployed. The issue is they don't really have the, the scale or the users that Ethereum does as an ecosystem. They don't have the tooling. They don't have the uh, user base. They don't have the web wallets to, to actually take advantage of this. And because of that, you don't see nearly the same adoption as you do as Ethereum being the legacy chain that has existed in this ecosystem. And could that change? Maybe. But I think a trend we're starting to see is this concept of bridging between blockchains. If that becomes the case, then the any application that you build on Ethereum that is compatible with the EVM, which stands for Ethereum Virtual Machine, which is responsible for processing all of the code in a consistent fashion. If that's the case, then what you'll start to see happen is kind of a federation, if you will, of various different blockchains that exist with bridges that connect in between them. And as long as you're developing around a standard, it'll be fine. That I think is the likely scenario that we ultimately see happening. And so if that does happen, going back to the beginning of the, the video, it really just means that as long as you're targeting Ethereum because it's the biggest and are developing in a way that's kind of pretty standardized, you're not going to really run into issues down the road. And in reality, you might be able to pick any of these chains. And that includes layer two chains like Polygon, which is, I think, personally my favorite project out of the bunch because it's very closely integrated with Ethereum. It's designed to be a layer two solution. They're working on ways to further improve the scalability, but at the same time, it's done in such a way that it's not really meant to compete as a layer one, but rather to coexist and, and, and build on top of Ethereum. And I think that's, that's incredibly powerful. Looking at the project, I, th I think that they're making improvements in terms of how they actually work with Ethereum. And I think that that's very promising compared to layer one solutions like Binance, like Cardano, like uh, Solana, that, that are trying to develop their own ecosystem. And because Polygon is in, in, in that realm of collaborating rather than competing, it kind of by definition is already working with the tooling and developers today without our building tooling and resources can think about supporting Polygon as that offloading mechanism to, to really get towards scale. So if you ask me personally, what, what I, I think today, someone who's looking at developing in blockchain should really be looking at, I think you should be looking at the Ethereum blockchain, but given the fees that exist today, you should be looking at projects that have bridges into Ethereum and have ways that have very strong bridges where you can actually build out custom projects. Polygon fits that bill. Unlike other layer ones, which have bridging mechanisms that are really just tied to around standards, Polygon by being an Ethereum actual layer two, gives you tools that if you're developing around standards, it's very easy to bridge between Polygon and Ethereum. But if you're building something custom, you have the flexibility to actually deploy custom contracts and map things together. So in that capacity, uh, I'll be taking a look at Polygon over the next few videos here uh, as we're building out, I think, a pretty interesting ticketing feature that could be used with render streaming, which I'm really excited about kind of bridging the gap there too and, and, and enabling people to sell games with the blockchain. And I think that unlocks a, a huge range of opportunities when it comes to development and commercialization, which is really exciting. So 
Hopefully you found this kind of high level overview of my thought process helpful. Again, would love to know down in the comments below what chains you're taking a look at and what are the reasons for that. But otherwise, I'll think I'll wrap it up here. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.